Hey guys, Angelo Esquivel here, back with another review, and today I'm going to be reviewing the VR headset for your cell phone from Victony. Now when you get this headset, it's going to come with two things, the headset itself and a VR remote. This VR remote allows you to do some advanced functions depending on which VR application you're using, and has options to switch between Android compatibility and Apple. So, uh, this comes in handy for quick menu selections in a lot of different apps, but uh, we'll get to that in a bit. Right now, let's talk about the headset itself, because there is a lot to go over, because you do get a lot for your money. Now, comfort is king. If your headset is not comfortable, you're not going to enjoy the experience, and Victony has done a pretty good job at making their headset nice and comfy for long-term use. So let's swing this back around here and talk about some of the details. Now, this has a three-strap system, unlike a lot of headsets that only have the two straps on the left and right. Uh, this helps it so that it doesn't ride down on your face and it doesn't put as much pressure on your nose. Now, this, mater this material is stretchy and has Velcro at all three sides for all three points of adjustment. Now if we move this back, we have the part that actually touches your face, which is a soft, breathable fabric with some foam underneath to make it nice and cushiony. And uh, I've used this for hours and hours on end, and I can attest to just how comfortable it is. Uh, my face doesn't heat up, and it doesn't leave any red marks on my face. Uh, unlike the cheap $5 cardboards out there that really just dig into your face. Now the profile of this is a lot wider than the cheap $5 cardboard ones uh, because let's face it, those were designed for a much smaller face where this one, it's going to fit a larger variety of people's faces. Down here at the bridge of the nose we have a sort of foam-like material it's nice and soft, so that way your nose doesn't feel a lot of pressure, and it's not a hard plastic that's touching it, so it's really comfortable down there as well. In addition to all of this, the headset is incredibly light. It's really not much more heavy than the standard Google Cardboard. Now, if you want to know specifics, there will be a link in the description to where you can get this on Amazon, and it'll go over specific details like how many grams of weight the headset is exactly. So those are the comfort amenities. The lens quality in this headset is pretty darn good for what you're paying for. And there's actually a lot of different adjustments to help make sure that everything is in focus and placed nicely. For instance, uh, the distance from the center here for the lenses can be adjusted with this dial up here at the top. So, depending on how far away your eyes are from your nose, you can adjust for that, and they stay symmetrical. But that's not the only place of adjustment. Now, depending on your vision, you can adjust just how far away your phone is. When your phone slides into this slot right here, there are adjustments on the left and right that you can use to make the phone further or closer to your face. Now, there isn't a lot of adjustment, but there's definitely enough to make a difference. Unlike the standard Google Cardboard that has a little lever, that taps on the screen of the phone to make a selection, we have a different methodology that this headset uses. Up here, you'll notice this little metal thing. This is actually a magnet, and this can be removed, so try not to lose it, but as you can hear, it's snapped back into place. And what it does is it can slide back and forth, and you only need to do it once or twice. It creates a small magnetic field that will, depending on the application, open up a menu in your VR app and allow you to select whatever settings you need to select. Now, if you want more advanced functions, 
you have the VR remote, which has this little pad here. And uh, in my case, this also um, allows like an arrow, like on a Windows desktop, to appear. You got the power button, a button settings button. You got A, B, C, and D. And you also have two trigger buttons up here. Uh, this button right here uh, allows for different configurations that are predetermined that you have to look at the manual to see just exactly what, con what configurations can be done. It connects via Bluetooth and as I was saying before it has compatibility for Android or iOS. Simply switch between the two depending on which phone you're using. It uses two AAA batteries and is a good companion for any VR headset. So at this point you might be saying to yourself, well, those features are all in good, but why exactly should I go for this one over any other VR headset? Well, it's the way this is designed to cradle your phone that makes a big difference in my opinion. You see, a lot of manufacturers that have phones like this that are a single like unibody design that you can't remove the backing of, Use this metal back part of the phone as a heat sink for the CPU and the GPU. Now, not all phones use this technique, but it's very important to remember that phones need to disperse heat as well, and VR applications will push your phone's capabilities to its limits. So, when I place my phone in my headset, it slides in like so. And you'll notice the back of it is completely completely exposed and that is a good thing because this phone does happen to use the back of the case, uh, the back of the phone as a heat sink and this allows air to pass on it and help keep it cooled so it doesn't overheat in VR applications but there's another very distinct advantage to having this open case design you see, VR applications are known to drain your battery really, really fast. Now, I have Qualcomm Quick Charge 3 on this phone with USB-C, but you don't need a super fast charger like that to make use of something like this. This is a battery bank. This battery bank is 20,000 milliamp hours and can charge my phone. You see, when I'm on my VR application, instead of letting the app drain the battery, I can simply have this battery pack on my hip and have the battery back pack plugged into the phone so that way I don't lose power. Now another good thing is all the buttons on the top of the phone are completely accessible for me to use. The camera, if your phone uses tracking systems uh, that uh, needs the camera in your app, is completely available to you. And your headphone jack is not blocked in any manner either, allowing you to use whatever headphones you please. So, all of this together allows for a very good VR experience. It's comfortable, it's lightweight, you have a lot of features and options in terms of controlling your VR apps. It helps keep the phone from overheating simply by design. All of the ports are completely accessible and the quality of the lenses and adjustment capabilities of this headset make it a huge winner in my book. Now, this review simply wouldn't be complete without you actually seeing how it fits on my face. So, with everything plugged into the phone, let's go ahead and do that. Battery pack on my side. Earplugs. Plugged in. Or headphones plugged in, I should say. Actually, let's go the other way. And in my case, I'm nearsighted so I can see things close to me. So I don't need to wear my glasses when I'm using the VR headset. All together, this is what it looks like. The feeling isn't half bad. It's very comfy like I was saying before, and I've used 
this headset for hours and hours on end without any difficulty. Now, there are a gripe here and there. You see, uh, down here at the nose, in order to accommodate a large number of faces, they had to make this uh, nose portion a little bigger than you might want it to be. So, some light can enter through the bottom, and you can do some stuff to kind of try and adjust for it, but whatever the reason, uh, there'll still be some light that comes in through the very bottom, and because of that, uh, it can be a little annoying uh, depending on your, what you're doing in VR. That being said, that's really the only gripe as far as the headset is concerned. Now the only other gripe I have with this entire system is the VR remote doesn't really stay connected to my phone for very long. And I'm not sure if it's an issue with this remote in particular or my phone in particular. As you may notice, I don't really have uh, a, f a Samsung or HTC or anything from a major manufacturer. I have a ZTE Axon 7, and although this phone is very good, in my opinion, uh, there are some quirks about it here and there, so it's kind of hard to tell what might be the issue. That being said, uh, I'm sure the VR remote is the least expensive component to this entire headset, so it very well might be the case that this VR remote is just cheap. So. All in all, for less than $35, I'd say it's an amazing headset. And I think it's the right choice. Now, it would have been nice to uh, have some adjustments on the headset to accommodate for phones that use a cell phone case, like 99% of the world is with their phones. So you'll end up having to take your phone out of your phone case, but in the end that's more of a good thing than a bad thing, simply because, like I was stating before, you need the phone to be able to breathe, otherwise your phone's going to overheat. And if it overheats, your performance gets diminished significantly in VR applications, something you really don't want to happen in VR. So, with that all said, I highly recommend this headset. I think it's worth every single penny, and I enjoy it. I really do. I just wish the VR remote was a little better, and I wish the nose piece was a little smaller so that I didn't let light in from the bottom. But uh, other than that, they did a pretty darn good job on it. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope it helped. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, show your friends, check out my other videos. I've got plenty of them. If you're viewing on Amazon, please give me a like on my uh, review here if you found it informative. And I will see you next time.